Well, Phil, this is the beginning of our psychodrama day. And you and I can um, have a dialogue about the work. And I'll comment and discuss it as fully as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. right. In this first part of the work, um, I'm endeavouring to uh, develop a good, easy working contact with each group member. I'm feeling very positive about the, the day. I'm uh, feeling confident about the day. I'm very easy about conducting a psychodrama group. And that um, ease, um, confidence, pleasure at being there is displayed in my functioning mm. and there is indeed a direct personal contact. I'm not referring to the group as the group, I'm referring to the group as you. It's a personal interaction and the group members are indeed warming up very well to being there. They feel my presence. They um, accept me. They accept who I am and what I'm saying to them. So I think that's a good start for the session. Before I started the group, I, as far as I can tell, let all that go. And um, I was, uh, in that sense, uh, really, I suppose, uh, on my own in the wilderness uh, uh, without experiencing any props and uh, feeling quite a sense of trepidation in myself mm. and um, realising consciously that um, now I had to rely totally on myself and um, sort of a sense of um, will I make it? Um, um, what will happen? And I was conscious of experiencing a tremendous sense of intrigue, not knowing what I was going to say, not knowing <laughs> what anybody was going to do. <laughs> that would be typical of how I start mm. and um, quite frankly I find the whole process uh, very unnerving. Mm. I want them to accept that dis-ease. Mm. I really want them to accept it and not feel that it's not part of their work as a group leader. I want them to realise that all this is part of the work. Mm. And to me, it's one thing that makes the work go. For, for the people in the group to realise that here is a real living human being who goes through all kinds of things. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, I think it has quite a good effect on... Uh, the members of the group feeling safe. And, and, and I think it, it lays a groundwork for them to um, increasingly uh, accept all their own quirky experiences. Mm. Um, to accept everything that's coming up in themselves. Mm instead of uh, filtering out lots of things and saying, oh, you know, that doesn't belong to life, or that doesn't belong to, uh, uh, doesn't belong in this situation. To me, everything belongs. 
is not one single thing that doesn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, to me, the human mind is absolutely incredible. What it can do. Mm. And, and we're only tapping into a small part of it. But how rich is the human mind? And um, when I look at everybody, when I see everybody, I don't look at people. I, um, there's an impact that each person has on me. They sort of coming toward me. And um, you can argue, yes, I'm seeing people. Um, but um, there's more of a sense of being with people, mm. really. And there's feeling flowing from one person to another. And there's a sense of the spirit moving in the air. Quite frankly, I'd like to say the spirit is the air. <laughs> but there's almost a sense of the air moving, you know? Mm. You can feel it in the room. It's um, vibrant. Um, it must have been then that there were all these things coming toward me, just as they come toward everyone else that I would receive subliminally, that were affecting me. But I've noticed that um, I've uh, uh, worked, worked, worked to be conscious of the body and conscious of uh, the um, things that are in between me and the other person and, and conscious of uh, all kind of things that start to sort of awaken in me in response. And, um, I feel sure in myself that there's so much more to feel, so much more to be conscious of. We want to be emptying ourselves so that we're freed of some of the old gunk, preferably all of the old conflicts, all of the old concepts. But we want to fill ourselves with content. We want to fill ourselves with new ideas, with concepts that are relevant for now. And in those days when I saw Zerka, I was uh, very aware that uh, when I was with her, I was filling myself up with content, filling myself up with things that were important to me right now that I could make use of immediately in my life. And so, my hope when I'm with people in a group like this is that after the group finishes, they will carry one another with them. They will remember. When they lose their sense of inspiration, just as I will remember them afterwards, I'm very keen that they will remember me and one another. Mm. And likewise, I'm very keen for every person who directs people in a psychodrama session that they will remember their teachers, all the different teachers they've had over the years, so that they can be filled with content It certainly does require of the protagonist, the director, and the group a large measure of flexibility, a great amount of ability to live moment by moment, 
and not be constantly worried about what's going to happen next or exactly how to conduct the interview and what's right and what's wrong about what's been done, but rather a trust in the processes of life as they emerge moment by moment. <clears throat> Well, those are a few little preliminary comments. Now to get down to uh, some detailed points about the interview itself. First of all, we see a strong emphasis on the development of a greater ability to be together. A great emphasis on the importance of identifying what is the Taley relationship as we sit together at the beginning. And we see in this interview not only a recognition that there is, in fact, a strong mutual Taley, but we see efforts being made by the group by the protagonist and by the director to further increase the strength of the Taley relationship. And we see also the recognition of the fact that this Taley relationship must be carried forward into the rest of the drama. Another interesting fact is that during that time of focus on the relationship between the protagonist and the director, neither party is spending a lot of time looking at one another. There is not a lot of time being spent with the development of an emotional fusion which would be more associated in my view with a safety orientation. Rather, both parties orient themselves much more straight ahead, moving forward, orienting themselves toward the stage, orienting, orienting themselves toward the fact that something is about to be created. So seated that way, it seems to me that it has something of the effect of creating an intrigue. Something is going to happen. A sense of readiness is built up within the being of the protagonist, within the being of the director, and within the beings of each of the group members. It's a sort of a sense of straining forward, as Virgil describes in Book Two of the Aeneid, where he's focusing on the boat race, and the rowers are straining at the oars, and the boat is coursing its way through the waves. What an exciting thing it is to perceive how things can develop even before they happen. What a tremendous thing it is for encouraging the development or of our, of our imagination. What a tremendous thing it is for sowing additional seeds so that confidence develops. A sort of a sense of knowingness that something not only can happen, but it will happen. Much of the time, our expression 
is skewed. Such as, uh, I noticed just now you um, are going to uh, say something and I, I, I know you're going to say something. And um, I'm uh, pretty warmed up to this. But then you um, bring up that um, uh, you're going to ask a question about balance. And suddenly I realise that um, my mind is a total blank. And I realise that I'm actually very happy that my mind is a blank. But then I also uh, suddenly uh, wonder whether I'll be able to uh, adequately uh, deal with this question. And um, suddenly I realise that I'm not confident. And then I realise that I'm starting to warm up to a, an old sort of a way of learning, a sort of a dependency style of learning. I'm relating to uh, authority and uh, mm. feeling inadequate and not being able to measure up to the requirements of the authority. And that certainly I would identify as a skew there in my warm-up. Mm. So then I say to you um, some little uh, thing um, such as um, Oh, uh, that's something like, uh, I'll have to see if I can warm up to that and I find I start to relax and so I realise I'm uh, doing something which is probably fairly typical where I sort of make a bit of a fiddler and it helps me to warm up to another aspect of myself. Mm. And I become aware of a different attitude, a different mood and... Um, um, I feel uh, more explorative and I feel uh, interested in what's going to emerge as we sort of um, focus on this together. And so there's a, a, an emergence of other aspects of myself mm. in addition to the um, aspect of me that's still lurking there a bit where uh, I've lost confidence a little bit. So there's a range of different things now that sort of start to um, come up and affect me. That, that's what I mean by balance. Mm. It's the um, warming up to uh, the greater, the larger picture. Um, Instead of focusing on just narrowly on the word balance, um, this start to uh, sort of um, be aware of, uh, gee, uh, the value of balance in human life. Um, I um, start to remember the tarot pack. Um, I start to remember. Um, different uh, sessions that I've been in as a protagonist, all kinds of things, work with other people and uh, efforts I make to um, ensure that um, anxiety drops away and um, there's a recovery of the breadth of uh, things in human life. That's interesting. Um, I noticed that um, quite quickly um, there's a sort of a f different ideas start to pop up, you know? <laughs> it's like a, a little um, um, shoal of fish. <laughs> mm. it's uh, suddenly um, I don't feel I'm going to be eaten by a fish 
I feel I'm uh, becoming different fish, mm. sort of thing, and and sort of swimming along in the in the in the water. And where is that space? Is it between your eyes? Is it out here? Is it in your head? Where's the stage? <laughs> when you um, bring up the question, uh, uh, the question of um, balance, hmm. Actually, before you even say the word balance, um, certainly um, I'm uh, aware of feeling acceptance of you very strongly, and uh, um, I know I'm. Uh, hmm. Um, is it uh, opening up, responding to you? I know there's a sort of a sense of flow toward you, and um, then after with that, uh, I think there's a bit more focus on uh, my mind. There's probably a bit of worry there, but then uh, after, uh, sort of opening up again to you. So. Um, um, there is a, a sense of more uh, space in this mm. chest area. I, I, I just uh, know that uh, from time to time uh, uh, I do uh, reflect a lot on that area like to do with myself. Sometimes I'm aware that I just don't know what I'm feeling. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> and I know that I um, often am quite conscious of other people in that area, sort of, it's to do with the, often to do with the breath, you know, um, you might remember um, how yeah, sometimes I mention that a person's holding their breath and, uh, and tightening up in this <coughs> area and then uh, later on uh, I comment that uh, they're not holding their breath now, There's, um, the air's going in and out, and uh, there's a good sense of uh, flow, and uh, mm. so... So the point where I asked you, what's your stage, you held your breath? Yes, yes. You're wondering whether it was a trick question, or um, what I wanted, or... And then... You relaxed. When oh, you no, no, no. Know. At that point, uh, no, when you mentioned about the stage, um, no, I really enjoyed that bit. Um, I certainly did hold my breath at that point. I think I'm uh, attempting to make time stand still there and just uh, <laughs> sticking with that experience as for as long as I can. I think I just enjoyed that notion of a stage. Mm. And... Uh, then I was aware of um, knowing that, or waiting for something else to come up. I, I, I just wanted a space. I just wanted to have a bit of a space there, and I uh, felt uh, very full in that space. And I thought, mm. oh, something else will come up mm. in a minute. But I didn't want to just rush on there. But I mm. felt pretty good uh, when you mentioned stage. Mm. So I just. Like you, 
like I said, I just wanted to uh, savour that experience. <laughs> <laughs> More uh, uh, language of um, role theorist, I've become part of her social and cultural atom. She's accepted me as part of her social and cultural atom. Hmm. And I've actively uh, taken steps to be part of it. So, uh, looking at it from that point of view, as part of her social and cultural atom, I'm not conscious of being a model. Hmm. Yeah, you're co sorry. I'm I'm conscious of being a um, a companion. Yeah. With I don't know uh, whether it be uh, right to say I was a friend. But certainly I felt friendly. Um, hmm. Sometimes I um, go for a walk with somebody. Hmm. Um, sometimes um, somebody um, wants to work something out and um, a person sometimes says to me, um, oh, uh, could we go for a walk together and have a chat? Mm. I don't want to um, have a counselling session. I just want us to go for a walk together. And um, the sort of thing that I started to do there in the interview with Sue tends to come out a lot more when we're just walking together. Mm. Um, and, and the, and the um, sort of walking alongside one another um, uh, along the street or on the beach or in the forest, it, uh, it, it, somebody looking on would obviously see uh, companionship there. We see in the production a commitment to portraying and experiencing the truth of what has been going on. We see a ability to cease any denial we see an ability to enter into it in preference to looking for a solution there's an obvious interest in other people becoming companions with her and the director becoming a companion with her in this tragic situation. And in the midst of the tragedy there is no effort to gain sympathy from the others, but to simply portray it 
and to know the sense of other people being present in a humane way. <clears throat> There's a gentleness and a sensitivity in the direction of the drama. There's constantly an encouraging attitude by the director, encouraging the portrayal. There's an air of respect by the director, by the group members, by the auxiliaries. Indeed, um, we see in these scenes a portrayal of Marino's dream that this will indeed be a theatre of truth. There's not an idealisation. There's not a premature seeking of a false solution or a happy ending. Rather, there is a creation of a social system within which we're all bound together as one human group. Dedicated to being sensitive to one another, no matter what happens. And to continue that, whether there's a solution or not. <clears throat> 